Okay, so today we're going to talk about all of the books that I read during the month of November. So for those of you that watched my November TBR or my vlog that I did at the beginning of November, you would know that I ended up going in two readathons during the month of November. I had decided that I was going to go in Believeathon, which is the middle grade readathon that is run by Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. I will link his channel as well as the website for Believeathon in the description below. I really enjoyed the readathon and I think Gavin put in so much work and it's just incredible the amount of work, the amount of um, things that he's managed to organise, the authors that he's spoken to and works with, and it's just amazing. So you should definitely go and check out Gammon's channel. You should definitely go and check out the Believeathon website. If you are at all interested in middle grade, just having a fun time for a month, then you should definitely join the next Believeathon. I will, I'm going to say I will 90% <laughs> join the next readathon and never not quite know what's going to happen or where I'll be or you know how I feel but um I had such a good time I'm pretty certain that I'm going to do it next time and also I went in the Thousand Doors readathon this was a readathon that I was super excited about but I wasn't certain that I'd be able to fit it in with Believeathon but I managed to fit it in which I was really happy about because it was super fun so this is a readathon that was run by Emma from Drinking by My Shelf, Megan from Meg with Books and Tamsin from Tamsin Tea with Tamsin and the idea behind this particular readathon is that you have a bunch of different doors that you go through and that is how you do your readathon so you don't have a set TBR. So we couldn't even start planning for the first prompt, let alone the ongoing readathon until the readathon itself opened. Um, so the three hosts put up three different videos with three different prompts that you could start off with and then you took it from there, you followed the prompts depending on your opinion of the books you were reading and that took you to other prompts and so on. For more information about how I went during that readathon, what I actually thought of it all, what other prompts apart from books I ended up doing, I will put a link to the vlog that I did for that week in the description below. You should go and check it out if you want more information there. Um, and like I said, all of the... Um, YouTubers, sorry, uh, I feel like I should probably put a little caveat in right here. I am having a bit of an odd day. My, my attention is very focused on some other stuff and I decided that I wanted to film, so I am, but my brain's just a bit all over the place. So <laughs> just a little warning. Um, anyway, yeah, so all of their channels will be in the description below, so you should go and check them out and subscribe to them if you are not already. So, yeah, so those are the two readathons that I went in in November. Also, before I tell you about the books and what I thought of them, I just wanted to mention Corpile. So Corpile is a rating system that was created by G over at Book Roast. It is a little bit more... I want to say it's a bit more of an in-depth rating system than your five star rating system and that's not to suggest that anyone who does just use a five star rating system is doing anything wrong or that, you know it's all very subjective you do whatever it is works for you for a while there I wasn't doing a rating system I've decided to go ahead and look into core pile finally got around to doing it and it's working for me so far so I'm still using it so if you want more information about core pile and how it works then I will link the blog post that I actually used and I will also obviously link G's channel so that you can find out more if you want to use it yourself or you're just curious what I'm talking about. I will probably be looking down a bit because all of the details are here. I do have some stats, reading stats, but I will give you all of those at the very end of the video. But I will give you just a very, very, very brief rundown on how many books I read throughout the month. So. I read nine books in November, DNF'd one, and I am currently reading two. So there's that. <laughs> so the first book that I read in November was Enola Holmes, 
The Case of the Missing Marquess by Nancy Springer. I don't actually have a copy of it anymore. I mean, I do own the copy, but I lent it to a friend of mine. So I'm just going to put a picture here because I don't have the physical copy at the moment. So I gave this a 8.42 in core pile, which is a 4.5 star rating. I really enjoyed this book. I thought that it was really fun, really engaging, just a great time. It is middle grade. It is middle grade historical fiction mystery. As the name may suggest to you, Enola Holmes is the much younger sister of Sherlock Holmes and Mycroft Holmes. In the story, the first thing that we kind of discover is that she is the much younger sister of the famous detective. Her mother has gone missing and Enola doesn't know where she is um, and she brings her, contacts her older brothers, lets them know and they come to the country house where Nola has been brought up by her mother to, to help find her. And they also decide that they are going to send Enola off to boarding school. Enola, being an incredibly outspoken, strong, free-spirited um, 16 year old, she, I think she's 16, anyway, she does not want to go to boarding school. So, she decides she's not going to go to boarding school and in fact she's going to go and see if she can locate her mother herself. So it is not a retelling because it doesn't retell any of the Holmes, any of the Sherlock Holmes mysteries from Conan Doyle. I don't actually know what you call it when a book is using a storyline and a canon but writing a totally different story. I don't know what that's called. But anyway, either way, it's that kind of idea. So it's not a retelling, but it's taking the Holmes canon and creating a new story with some of those characters and with some of those themes um, and, and in that setting. So it's set in Victorian England. It follows Enola Holmes as she leaves her home and sets out to try and find her mother. I just really, really enjoyed it. I had a great time reading it. I thought that it was very well written. I really enjoyed the character of Enola. I thought that she was really fun and feisty and well written and engaging and interesting. It is written from her point of view, so it's first person. So for that reason, um, Enola Holmes is the character that is most fleshed out, but that's not to say that the other characters aren't, you, you don't get it, you get a sense of the other characters and of their personalities, but it's definitely all from Enola's point of view. So she's the most fleshed out character, but the others are quite well rounded. I think it works in that instance. Yeah, I don't fault it. It, it wasn't an, an issue for me. And yeah, it's just a really fun sort of adventure mystery story. It's very well paced. Um, it's middle grade, as I said. So you expect that fast paced, fast moving story, which it definitely was. It's quite short, so it's very easy to read. Because it's that fast paced, it's very engaging and lots of things are happening all the time. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, as you can tell from the 4.5 stars, I would definitely recommend it to anyone that likes middle grade historical fiction mysteries. I think it's aimed at sort of 10 to 13 year olds or some of the younger readers who are reading at the higher levels. I would definitely recommend for that age range. I think that it works really, really well for that age range. And yeah, I just think that it's really great and really well written and I really enjoyed it. So that's that one. The next book that I read was actually a comic book and I don't have it with me because I totally forgot that I had read it um, until I kind of sat down and looked at my my computer at my google doc sheet. Um, so I'll put it here again. So this was actually the fabulous X-Men series um the first one i enjoyed it i thought that it was fun i am not a huge comic book reader as you probably know if you've been around for a little while um i was for a little while doing a series about trying out new things like comic books and audiobooks i'm actually going to talk about that series and how that all went in more depth in my end of year goals um reflection video so keep an eye out for that but anyway Yes, so I read the X-Men, I read that because of one of the prompts that I ended up 
the next prompt that I ended up getting from the thousand thousand uh, thousand doors even readathon and the prompt was basically a photo of x-men and I just I had the X-Men, so it went. Honestly, I don't really feel like I have a huge amount to say about it. Most people know what the X-Men are. Most people know a little bit about X-Men and sort of the general storyline and, and world that the X-Men encompass. It was a good time. It took me like a couple hours to read and I wasn't sitting down and reading for two straight hours either. Um, so it was very easy to do. Had a good time doing it, um, something a little bit different. I ended up giving it a 6.42 on the core pile rating, which equals three stars. So like I said, it was a good time, pretty middle of the road. Um, enjoyed it while it lasted kind of situation. So that's that one. Finishing that book led me to a prompt to finish a book that I had. At th the prompt was, I'm back. So you could take that however you liked um, and one of the ways that you could take it was to read a book that you had previously put down. So this is yet another book that I for some reason have managed not to actually grab. I do actually have a pile of books here that I will be showing you but I didn't grab this one either so <laughs> I'm going to put a picture on the screen as well. But anyway, um, yes, so during the Because We Can readathon, which was in October, I read most of the book Mullumbimby by Melissa Lukashenko, but I put it down. I'm not even sure why now, to be honest. I feel like this has been a really long couple of months. Anyway, um, so I put it down. I decided to pick it back up again for that prompt because it worked quite well, and I finished it off. So Mullumbimby is a book that is actually set in the town of Mullumbimby which is in northern New South Wales. It is about a sort of 30 something year old woman and she is a Aboriginal woman whose um, who's people come from that part of Australia and she also owns the land according to property laws. Yes, yeah, so she sort of has double claim over the land. It's sort of a story about native title um, and about land ownership within Australia. It's a contemporary, it's also a bit of a love story. Um, it's also a story just about a woman sort of finding her feet. She's only recently moved to this part of Australia. She was previously a band member. I think she played guitar and um, so she traveled around uh, with her band and did gigs and whatnot and that ended and then she moved out to Mullumbimby she bought this property and she decided to run this um, this farm then she meets a man who is from a different um, Aboriginal family kinship group who have land claim in that area as well but he is in the middle of a um, native title claim through the courts against another kinship group who also have uh, some claim to that area and so she kind of becomes embroiled in this native title claim to land in the Mullumbimby area even though she herself kind of because she has native title so she has cultural <laughs> she has cultural um sort of not ownership but cu cultural li linkage to the land but she also has um australian federal law property ownership of the land as well so she's sort of in a unique position in that sense so she doesn't necessarily need to or want to be involved in this native cl title claim in the courts but she ends up being because of this guy and it's sort of about how they try to navigate that so there are quite a, a few comments on on the situation in Australia in terms of native title in terms of land ownership in terms of the concept of country and the link to country that um, a lot of Aboriginal Australian people feel and how they can prove that native title and that land, that linkage to country through court and what that means in a European 
state-style court that um, and, and federal government system that's what we operate under in Australia. So in that sense, it was really, really interesting. Um, I did enjoy it. It wasn't my favourite book of all time, but um, yeah, I thought it was quite interesting and I thought it was quite well written. I really liked the character, of the main character, whose name I've actually gone and completely forgotten. <laughs> Um, but I did really like her character. wasn't super fan of the guy she is dating, but that's okay. I don't have to like everyone in a story. Um, but I thought the characters were well written. I thought the storyline was well written. I thought that there were links to some current political situations that were done really well without sort of being beating you over the head with them. So they were Wow, they were woven really well into the storyline. Yeah, so overall I thought it was quite a good book. I gave it a 7.14 on my core pile, which means I gave it four stars. So definitely enjoyable. And yeah, highly recommend if you like contemporary books, if you are interested in reading Australian books or finding out more about Australia and sort of Australian political history and situation then I definitely would recommend this book so that's that one I uh, currently have a flashing uh, battery light so I'm actually going to go and change that and then I'll be back in a sec I'm back so the next book that I have to talk about is still in the Thousand Doors readathon but it's actually also back into our Believeathon TBR and that book is Frost Heart by Jamie Lindler. I told you I actually had physical books with me. Um, so this is a middle grade fantasy story. I actually don't know whether this is set in a sort of future version of our world or if it's set in an entirely made up fantasy world. There are definitely elements of the story that had me wondering if it is supposed to be some kind of alternative future of our world after we have managed to have some kind of environmental catastrophe, but I don't know if that's the case. We follow our main character Ash, who is a young boy who is sort of around 11-ish. So he, he lives in a city in this world and the world is a total um, sort of the world is a total icy land so it's sort of like if we had another ice age and there are monsters called leviathans that live out in the icy world um, and the way that humans manage to escape leviathans is they build these cities and they live in these cities and the leviathans don't attack the cities but as soon as you venture out into the icy land then they can come and attack you. Um, so Ash lives in this one city and there is a bit of a story, a bit of a mythos about song weavers, about people that that sing um, who can have control over Levi leviathans but leviathans can also use them to destroy cities and humans and other creatures. It's revealed quite early on some stuff to do with that and Ash and as a result he and his yeti, uh, my words are just <laughs> not working today. Uh, I think it says on the back here, Guardian. Yes, it does. Um, him and his Yeti Guardian end up going on this big sleigh called Frostheart. And the sleigh is kind of like, if we, kind of like an expedition ship, but it's a big sleigh. So they have um, sails and everything and they traverse the, the wastelands, the icy wastelands and do trade and have adventures and all of this sort of thing. So Ash and the Yeti companion whose name is... I can't remember his name. Tobu is the Yeti's name. They end up joining the crew of Frostheart um, and it's about their adventures. Ash has been left in the guardianship of Tobu because his parents have gone missing so he's kind of half joining them to search for his parents. So yeah 
Um, I had a great time reading this book. I thought that it was so much fun. It's really well written. Again, it's a middle grade, so it's quite fast paced. There's a lot of action, a lot of adventure, a lot happens really quickly. But that's the kind of thing that you expect from this sort of middle grade action adventure fantasy story. I really like Ash's character. I thought that he was really fun, really well written. I thought the world building was excellent. It was really, you could really get a sense of the world and that there was some kind of mystery to unravel. It's given to you in a really nice piecemeal way that works really well with the storyline even though there's so much happening. I like the other characters. I think the other characters are well fleshed out. There's a huge amount of characters in the story but all of the characters are given, even if it's just a snippet of personality trait, they're given a personality, they're given something that makes them unique and interesting and I really, really like that. I thought that was really well done, especially given, as I said, that this is so fast paced and there's so much action, to have characters also really well written and fleshed out is really great. The descriptions in here are beautiful. You really, like I said, get a sense of the world building, you get a real sense of the icy tundra almost and um, the kind of world that they live in. There's a real fear in the in the Leviathans but also a real mystery. There's a real sense that there's something else that we don't know about that we will learn in the second book I'm hoping. Yeah so I really enjoyed this. I definitely think it's worth a read. I definitely think that it reads like middle grade in the sense that it is that fast-paced action-packed fun adventure fantasy but it didn't ever feel like I'm reading a book that is too young for me, that is not written for me, even though that's absolutely 100% the case. As an adult, I still really enjoyed it. I felt like I was just having a really fun time and there was a lot going on and he didn't, Jamie Littler didn't skimp on any of the fundamentals of storytelling that are important to me, like character development and um, world building so I definitely recommend this book. On Core Pile I gave this a 9 out of 10 and in Stars I gave it a 5 so love this one. The next book that I read was Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I had mixed feelings about this one. I enjoyed it. I thought that it was well written. I thought that it had great atmosphere and it definitely had gothic elements that I really appreciated but it's not really a but in a bad way. It's just there were some aspects of the story that I wasn't expecting and so it kind of threw me a little bit. So I ended up giving it a 7.43 on Core Pile, which translates to a four star. So it's definitely a book that I enjoyed. So the main thing that kind of threw me a little bit, I think was actually about my expectations of the book rather than the book itself. I think that what happened was I had a very specific idea of what Gothic literature was, which it turns out I wasn't, my, notion of gothic literature was too narrow. There are a few things that came up in here which were, now <laughs> I've never read any like body horror so I don't know if what I'm about to say is true so if you are a person that reads body horror you might totally disagree with me but some of the stuff in here to me felt like they were kind of gross and there was in fact one or two occasions where I was really, I was kind of cringing as I was reading it. I am not, yeah, I've discovered mostly through that that I don't really want to read body horror or watch body horror. I'm not a, a big icky gross kind of person. I quite like a horror suspense but just blood and guts and gore is just not really my thing. So there were a few moments in this that were kind of, yeah, just kind of gross, <laughs> which I wasn't expecting because when I think of gothic literature, I think more along the lines of the suspenseful gothic, like Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, like Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, and those sorts of books, which are definitely gothic literature, but they are more gothic romance, whereas 
something like um, The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson or Dracula by Bram Stoker, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Those books are actually more kind of gothic suspense or gothic horror. And I guess, yeah, I don't feel like my understanding of gothic, gothic literature as a whole was really very advanced. <laughs> Um, so I came to this expecting it to be more kind of romance gothic so more like Rebecca and it was more horror supernatural gothic so it was more Bram Stoker Shirley Jackson um, which is fine um, it just wasn't what I was expecting so it kind of threw me a little bit but once I actually went and did a very very tiny amount of research um, mostly just googling to look into gothic literature and sort of discovered there are within that genre there are subgenres of sort of more suspense and horror gothic and the romantic gothic and and saw some of those other books like Dracula the Haunting of Hill House, those sorts of books within Gothic literature, I was able to say, okay, so actually this does fit that particular genre. So it started to make sense to me a lot more. Yes, yeah, so I definitely enjoyed it. I definitely feel like there were elements that were really interesting. As you could tell, I gave it quite high ranking and I... It definitely would recommend if you like gothic literature, if you like horror, if you like suspense, supernatural sort of thrillers, I definitely would recommend. Um, I thought that it was well written. There were some choices of narrative structure that, yeah, I just found a little bit uneasy, but I think that that was done very deliberately to create that feeling of unease that was went together to make this book that kind of horror, weird, suspense, gothic kind of unearthly feeling, which now that I've sort of read a little bit more about what gothic literature actually encompasses, I definitely appreciate more. So I feel like I had quite a journey with this book, not just in terms of reading the book itself um, and enjoying the book itself, but in terms of sort of learning more about a certain category of literature and about my own understanding of literature so that was really interesting yeah so definitely think this is worth a read I definitely enjoyed it it's just I feel like I'm I feel like I might even need a reread might probably not immediately but sooner rather than later just because I feel like I would get more out of it if I went into it a second time expecting some of those narrative choices in order to make me uneasy I wonder what I would think of it when I was expecting it so yeah that's that one next up we have my DNF or did not finish so that is this one here dragonfly song by Wendy Orr so if you watched my um, TBR game for November then you would have seen that I was a little bit uncertain about this one because the majority of this book is told in verse. I'm just not a big reader of stuff in verse, not a big poetry reader. I never really got into the idea of reading books in verse and that held true for this one. So I got <laughs> that far into it, so not very far at all. There was definitely things about it that I was finding interesting, but it just wasn't enough to really hold my attention. I'm not sure even what it is about this writing style that I'm not, that I don't gel with, but I just, I find it, I just find it that it doesn't gel with me basically. So I ended up putting this one down. I did think that I might come back to it at some point, but it's now December and I want to get on with my December reads but also this is a library book and it's actually due back so I can't see myself going to any amount of effort to pick this up again if I owned it I would but I don't so yeah that's that one next we have Who Am I by Anita Heiss so this is a middle grade like many of the books here this is a middle grade book about a young 
Aboriginal Australian girl in the, I think, 1930s. And she is, it's during the period of Australian history where young children and young, young people were taken from their Aboriginal families and put somewhere else. So it really depended on the colour of their skin. So if they were lighter skinned, then they would often be given to white families to be raised as white. And if they were darker skinned, then they would often be given to white families to work as servants. Um, yeah, so this book was a lot. It's a really short book. It's only 100 and well, it's 194 pages, but the actual book, the actual story itself is only 187 pages. But there's a lot of stuff in here. It's written in diary form um, and it follows this young girl Mary who has been taken from her family. We start out the story where she is living in um, a children's home but then she gets sent to a well well-off Clark a family yeah. <laughs> then she gets sent into a well-off family in the northern suburbs of Sydney in a very affluent suburb and she is sent there to be adopted by them and to be basically assimilated into white culture so she is told by them to act as though she's not Aboriginal act as though she's there from their family that she's white that she is not an Aboriginal Australian. So it's about her trying to figure out what's going on, trying to keep a sense of her Aboriginal identity and try to sort of understand why she has been put here, what's actually happening, why her family don't want her. She's led to believe that her family can't care for her and you find out a lot of stuff about the practices at that time and what was actually done in order to during through this white Australian policy where children were this was a real policy this is what was actually happening children and young people were taken from their families and and this that happened they were put into service or they were given to white families to raise entire generations of Aboriginal people and families were torn apart uh, because of this policy and it didn't this is set I think like I said in the 30s but it was happening up until the 50s and 60s so like I said for such a small book it packs a big punch I did give it a rating but in all honesty I'm starting to wonder if I shouldn't if I should not give it a rating simply because it's it's not written for me it's written for middle grade readers so it's written for 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 year olds and it's written to give a sense of the situation and a sense of Aboriginal history. So I definitely would recommend it as a book for young people. I think it's definitely worthwhile reading even as an adult because there is a lot of information in there which is super important for us to have especially because so much of that information is not talked about in our society. We're not educated about this so I think it's really important as a book for for young people to read so they can learn but also for us adults to learn but if middle grade diary format books aren't your thing then maybe some non-fiction might be more beneficial or more more interesting for you but um yeah I definitely think it was important and worthwhile reading and I'm glad that I read it but it was more about the message so yeah next up is Nevermore by Jessica Townsend so I love this book I had so much fun reading this book. I just thought it was fun. I thought it was engaging. I thought it was interesting. Much like Frostheart, it is a book written again for middle grade readers, but it is also written 
for an adult audience at the same time. There is just so much whimsy and so much magic and enjoyment and just all that sort of stuff that you want from a new middle grade book. It's fun, there's lots going on, it's an adventure, but there's some really, really great characterization. It's just great. It's just super fun. I feel like I probably don't need to talk too much about what this book is about. This has been pretty popular on booktube for the last, I don't know, few years now but for those that don't know we follow Morrigan Crow who is a young 11 year old girl who is a cursed child so what that means is that when she turns 11 she will die but she it is thought that she is cursed so it's thought that everything that happens around her is because of the curse on her but when she turns 11 a person called Jupiter North comes to take her away to Nevermore and everything changes for her and she is then put into the trials as a candidate to become a wondrous society member. It's all about her going through the trials and it's all about her yeah trying to join the wondrous society. Like I said I love the characters in this story. We have Morrigan. I love her characterization. I think she's very well written. I just think she is a really interesting character. We have Jupiter who again is also really well written. We just have so many. It's such a cast of interesting fun characters as you can see there we have a giant cat called a magnificat which i just adore as you guys know i am a cat lover i have three cats and i just really enjoyed the idea of a giant cat who is the housekeeper in the hotel which jupiter runs which is where morrigan now lives. So as you probably imagine there is more to the story and more to the situation with Morrigan and what's going on in the world than, than that brief synopsis would have you believe. But it's just it's so fun, it's so well written, the, it's really really well paced, there's lots going on, lots of stuff happening, lots of adventures, lots lots just lots, just lots. <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely really fun. I know that this is quite a few people's one of favorite series. Holopox came out earlier, I think a month or so ago. So now that I have read Nevermore, I immediately went and bought um, Wondersmith and Holopox. And as you can see, I am part, we probably about a third of the way through Wondersmith so because I finished all of my TBR books for November I sneakily started this one. I will continue reading it during the month of December. <laughs> I forgot where we were for a second um, along with my other books but yes so I'm really enjoying this series. I have Holopox as well so when I get a chance I'll read that one too. I don't really know what else to say about this one. I just I just think it's great. I just think it's well written. It's fun. It's engaging. It's interesting. It is a story that it says on the front cover here, readers will feel as though Harry Potter is meeting Al Alice in Wonderland and I really felt that way. It's got so many elements that we can appreciate from Harry Potter. So it's got the kind of school, it's got the trials like the Goblet of Fire, it's got that friendship motif, but at the same time there's such a sense of wonder and whimsy. And I really like the way that Jessica Townsend has built the world here. So she has a really deep world and it, it's great world building, but She's one of those authors that can make you feel like you live in the world and the world happens around you and you don't necessarily understand everything. So she mentions things as though it's just a normal everyday thing that people are aware of. She doesn't necessarily explain every little thing like happens in the world that there are so many things that we hear constantly, that we hear referred to constantly, that we don't necessarily understand or that we kind of, through inference we understand or through context we understand, but because we live it, if you took us out of those contexts and, and if we didn't have the inference, we wouldn't understand it. And I feel like that's how Jessica Townsend writes and I really appreciate that. 
as a writer. I really appreciate, as an author of the reader, I should say, um, I really appreciate the idea that it is not explained to us because it's not that I didn't understand everything in this book. I don't still don't understand everything in this book. I'm assuming that it will be revealed as is needed, but there are so many things that make sense in the context. And once you get the context, which she does eventually give you, you understand kind of what that is or how it works but she doesn't explain yeah she doesn't over explain which I really appreciate I think that's a really interesting I think that's a difficult technique to be able to do and I think she does it really well so super impressed by Jessica Townsend and I'm super excited to read the rest of Hol the rest of uh, Wondersmith and then read Holopox and anything else that she writes for the rating for that one I gave it a 9.14 for Corpile, which is a 5 star, which will not surprise you at all given how much I just gushed over it. Next up, we have Music for Tigers by Michelle Caderousman. I don't actually know what sort of genre or category to put this in. Um, I mean, it's middle grade. I feel like there's fantastical elements to this story, but it's not magic or anything like that. So I guess it's a sort of future, alternative future history, if that makes sense. So it's basically about a young girl called Louisa who travels from Canada to Tasmania to stay with her uncle and she meets a young boy called Colin. They are around sort of 12-ish I think. She learns about a secret to do with thylacines or um, Tasmanian tigers who are unfortunately extinct but there have been many 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 reported sightings of Tasmanian tigers since the last known tiger or thylacine died in captivity in 1939. This takes that notion and creates a fantastical story about it um, and it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Similar to Who Am I? It wasn't intended for me so unlike Nevermore and Frostheart it isn't a book that I would say was written with the intention of being a book that adults would enjoy even though it's middle grade. I would say it was written with the intention of it being read by middle grade readers and enjoyed by middle grade readers. But there were definitely elements that I enjoyed. I thought that it was quite well written. I thought that it was interesting. Um, I really liked the premise and the idea of we are revealed. <laughs> the other thing that I will say about this book is that there is a side character who is on the autism spectrum and I don't know Hello, pistachio. Sorry, Rowan is just showing me one of my cats. And then the other cat started talking to him because he poked his head around the corner. Yeah. Uh, and if you can hear the rain in the background, well, it's raining. Started pouring with rain. Yeah, just started pouring with rain. Um, anyway, uh, so yes, I there is a child in here who is who has autism spectrum disorder. I don't have autism spectrum disorder and I work with children who are on the spectrum but I don't have any children who have ASD myself so I don't really I feel like I don't really know I can't speak to the characterization of this child um, or of autism so I probably should go and see if I can find some Own Voices reviewers. I don't think it's a particularly popular book or a particularly well-known book, so I don't know whether there are any. But anyway, um, just putting that out there that there is representation in here that I cannot speak to, and I'd be curious to know what uh, people think of it. I personally thought that it was done reasonably well, but... Yeah, again, I, 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 I'm not a known voices reviewer, so there's that. The last book that I read this month and actually completed is a book that I read on my e-reader, so I'll pop a picture up here, and that is The Guest List by Lucy Foley. So this is a book that I read with 
Connor from Connor's Library Corner and it's a book that Connor and I actually agreed upon which I think is literally a first for us. So that's actually really exciting and really cool. We are going to read The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley together this month as well and I'm really keen to see whether we enjoy it both enjoy it as well for that one um, we might be on to an author that we both like or maybe a genre that we both like maybe we both uh, th enjoy thrillers Connor is much more au fait with thrillers than I am thriller is not my sort of known genre it's a genre I've gotten into recently so I don't really feel like I have a yeah I don't feel like I have a beat on <laughs> thrillers so yeah but um we both really enjoyed it kind of it was middle of the road for us both I definitely should you should definitely check out Connor's channel he is one of my favorite youtubers he's a good friend and he's amazing so you should go and subscribe to him and obviously he will tell you what he rated it what his thoughts were about it I gave it a 6.57 on core pile which translates to three stars so yeah I enjoyed it but yeah it wasn't my favorite book of the month but definitely enjoyable read it reminded me a lot of and then there were none but it did what and then there were none didn't do which is it built up the characters more which I really appreciated so yeah I actually liked it more than and then there were none but it definitely you could definitely tell it was influenced by that book so it is about a wedding that takes place on an island off the coast of Ireland I believe there is a murder and it's following several different points of view so we have the bride we have the best man we have the plus one plus one of the guests the bridesmaid and then we have a couple um of other points of views as well so we follow their different points of views and we sort of follow what's going on for them throughout the weekend and also some of their history there are two reveals at the end of the book so one reveal is who the victim is and one reveal is who the perpetrator is. I really liked that side of things. Connor did say that he guessed who the victim was pretty early on. I didn't. Um, I wasn't surprised when I found out who the victim was but I wasn't certain who the victim was until it was revealed so I don't think Connor found that to be a problem but it certainly wasn't a problem for me anyway and I didn't guess who the perpetrator was. I know Connor also didn't guess so he like I said is much more of a knowledgeable about thrillers so if he didn't guess then hopefully other people wouldn't guess um me not guessing who in a thriller is not really saying anything much at all <laughs> so I definitely think it was really interesting I thought it was well written I really thought that the some of the characters I thought all of the characters that we saw from their point of view were well written I wouldn't necessarily say that all of the rest of the characters were super fleshed out but again I didn't actually find that a problem I don't think characters need every character needs to be super fleshed out all of the time but those that we saw their point of view were fleshed out I felt like Lucy Foley was actually quite able to give us a very distinct personalities for those different characters so I didn't feel like when I sw switched from the plus one to the bride I didn't feel like I was still reading the same character I felt like that inner voice was definitely a different voice so I thought that was really well done and yeah I just was overall really fun and enjoyable read and I'm super glad that Connor and I finally found a book that we both enjoyed not that it matters that we haven't enjoyed the books the, haven't had the same opinions about the books it's still really fun to chat with him about books and read with him but it's just nice to actually agree on something so yeah so that was the guest list one more book to talk about and that is The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemison. so if you've been watching this channel for a while you would know that my friend Alison and I have been buddy reading The Broken Earth, the Broken Earth Trilogy even by N.K. Jemison for a while now trying to be fairly flexible about how often we chat and trying to let each other kind of have you know moments where we don't aren't caught up or we don't want to or we're too busy so we haven't had a particularly tight schedule for reading this one these ones and also as amazing as these books are they're incredibly hard to read in some ways yeah sometimes we've kind of had to put them off a little bit I will talk about it in my December wrap up but 
it's definitely worth a read. I definitely am enjoying it. But yeah, it's just it's kind of intense. So it's not always easy going. <laughs> I did say that I would give you some stats. So again, I have to reach behind me for my reading journal, reading planner. So uh, eight books finished in total, one DNF and two still currently reading. I had two historical fiction books. One was a mystery, one was not. One was more contemporary historical, if that makes sense. Anyway, so two historical fiction, um, one contemporary, one gothic, two fantasy, one thriller slash mystery, and one sort of fabulism one, which was this one here, which I said that I didn't know, sorry, sort of how it fitted in. In total I read 2,689 pages. I would say that my favourite books of the month were Frost Heart and Nevermore. I really enjoyed those books. I thought they were fantastic. So those are the stats for my November reading and that is it guys. That is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.